as how to be successful leaders. The way to be successful leaders, and it's really very interesting because when we got independence, I was 18 years old. I was in senior two. And I was already uh, active in the school system, but also in the villages, politically. And I watched how those young people, they were all young people, those leaders of independence. Obote was 35 years old. I think the only one who was like 40, 41, was maybe in Adiope. Mutesa was like 39. They were all young people. Kakonge was 26. Adoko Nekion was 28. They were all young people. But I was able to watch these young people failing because they did not really get the issue of the interest of the people. The Banyankore called it Omcheno, the needs of the people. If you don't address the needs of the people, it will be a disaster for you. I watched these young people. There was no reason why they shouldn't have succeeded. Everything was here. But first of all, wrong ideas in, in the heads, and then neglecting the needs of the people. So before we broke up, before I went to speak to the president of Nigeria, I was telling you that the needs of the people, the first one the NRM has addressed was, has been the issue of security. And we have seen how much it has pushed us. For 30 years, NRM has been winning mainly, <coughs> mainly because of security. And this, this crime which had come up, terrorism, killing people and get, hiding, I had to solve it. Because if I didn't solve it, NRM would lose uh, credibility. People were beginning to say, how can people be killed? You don't know who has killed them. Then they would list them. So you remember how I had to come to parliament, those who were in, the, in that parliament. I came and I addressed you. I said, we need, I think, 12, 12 steps to take. We have defeated rural terrorism, Kony, ADF, but even these urban killers must be, because they were using the town. In the town, there are many people, big, big number of people, many vehicles, moving fast, you kill and you run away. So we had to, I had to get a solution for that. And, and, and that speech, which I gave in the parliament, I, I, I outlined the, the answers to this. One of them was the cameras. That's what I said, you must introduce cameras now. This business of the human, human source can no longer work. As usual, our system did not implement everything quickly. They implemented cameras halfway also, not fully. But we have seen how these cameras have helped. Now we have, we have cracked the group. These people who have arrested are the ones who are suspected to have been in the killing of Kawesi, in the killing of Chigundu, in the killing of, Ka of, Ka of, Ka of Kagezi, and now recently in the shooting, and, and the robberies, robberies in Nansana, robberies somewhere else, some killing, other killings of policemen,
and recently the, the attack on, on Katumba, which was very unwise for them because when they were killing people, we did not have the cameras. These cameras are very dangerous for the criminals. If they are, if they are used well, the criminals cannot easily escape. And as you must have heard, we are now going to introduce also the issue of the digital monitors. Every vehicle must have a digital monitor and every picky picky. Don't worry about your clandestine moves. We are not interested in those. Because I can see some people are worried. They will know where I am. We are not interested in where you are. You only come on our radar if you are car, you only come on our radar in two situations. Situation number one, if you try to remove the digital monitor from your vehicle or your, your picky picky, we know you now. You tamper with it, we know, we know you and we come for you. Secondly, if your car or your picky picky is near the scene of crime, Otherwise, your other things, please, we are not interested in them. Whatever else you are doing, we are not interested. We, we just want which vehicles were here when the crime was committed. That's all. And other measures. Once we do that, I will remove all the bodyguards from you people. We, we no longer need bodyguards. What? A country of bodyguards, what country is that? Bodyguards, I rejected the issue of roadblocks. I would never have roadblocks in Uganda. Stopping people, what? No, no, no. You go for the Jiga. The Jiga is the one which attacked the person. Go for the Jiga. Don't, don't cut the foot. So I told you, one of the people's needs was security. And then the other one was infrastructure. And I was telling you how, how infrastructure has helped us economically, security-wise, but also politically. Now, then the other needs that you as leaders you need to address is the issue of education. The education of the, of the, of the children of the poor. This is part of the problem. Then health, the drugs in the health centers which are being stolen. You have seen how my monitoring unit has been arresting people stealing drugs. Nazis, there's so much corruption. You as members of parliament, take interest to go to your health centers and check. That's what you are supposed to check in your area. But finally, the most important challenge you have is the issue of household incomes. If you don't address that, you will not succeed. This, whatever these little things you are doing, fundraising, going in the church, spending there the whole day as if you are preaching, will not help. People, yes, you may think they, they, they will they will support you because of that, but in the end, they will get tired and, and move away from you. So therefore, I appeal to you to really concentrate on this issue of wealth for the homes. Many of the people don't concentrate on it. There is a young MP who approached me recently Diana Mtasi, well, she came and approached me and uh, talked about mobilization in, in her area, Buyukwe. Then I said, but you are talking about of mobilization. You, you talk of mobilization. Mobilization, talking to people, visiting, but that's not a solution. Get a solution for those people. The, the, the solution is security, infrastructure, health, education, and wealth, wealth. I'll talk about jobs later. 
so I, I, I told uh, Diana Mtasingwa, you see here, the, I told her that if you really want to stabilize yourself, you better resolve the issue of, 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 of poverty in, in your area, and you do it by working on the issue of homestead incomes, by making your people understand how to get money from production. So she agreed, and I organized it for her. I think that's why she may not be here. I organized for her to visit, you remember, Nyakana, our man from uh, near, Fort, Ruenga, near Fort Porto. And she, and she visited also some people in Chiruhura and Chisozi. Now, she told me on the phone that when they got to Nyakana, you remember the Nyakana, the man I brought to you at, at Kiankwanzi, who is earning more than 200 million shillings from one acre. There was one councillor in her group, because she went with the group, who said, oh, I remember that Museveni was talking about this in Nambore when we had, he, apparently he's, he's an NRM delegate to the national conference. We were in Nambore and Museveni was talking about this and um, he was talking about earning a lot of money from one acre, but we never concentrated on it. We were, we were in a hurry to get allowances and go. <laughs> they, were, they were not interested. But now, oh, I see. So you people, you have got a very serious problem. Attitude change for your people. You must change the attitude of your people. Because that's where the problem is for them to understand that you can have a good life from small scale commercial farming with the Chibaro, Chura, Aymar, Otita. This is not a small, a small, a small thing, but it is the only way. Once your people understand, you will have a walkover. And I appeal to you really to concentrate on that. These other things you are doing, what? You are wasting time. They will not help you. Yeah. Attending funerals as if you are a, a, a one to bury people. People yeah. attending funerals, then they go there without shirts, without ties, they pretend as if they are. All that is just show. It will not help you. Sort of people's needs. Number one, security, which I am working on with the NRM together with you. Number two, infrastructure. Number three, education. Support my policy of free education for the children of the poor. Number four, health, drugs being stolen. Fight those thieves and arrest them in your area. And then number five, wealth creation. Now, many people talk about jobs. Yes, we we'll come from wealth creation. You remember the other man, uh, Nyakana, the one I brought to you uh, in, in Chiemkwanzi. He told you that before he listened to my advice, he was not employed, his wife was not employed, and he was employing nobody. But now, when he listened to my advice, he's employing 15 people without including himself and his wife. So together he's employing 17 people now. Now imagine, if in one homestead of one acre you can create 15 jobs, how many jobs would you create? Because the homesteads in Uganda are like 9 million now. Okay, some of them may not have land. But even if you said 7 million homesteads use their land to produce wealth, and each one is employing not 15, 15 people, even 10, 7 million homes, each one employing 10 people, that is 70 million jobs. 
you'll have more jobs than, than the population of Uganda. You will have to get to import labor from other countries. And that's what happened in the colonial times. You remember, when you go some of these areas, you find so, so many Banyarwanda people who came here. In Uganda, many of the people who say they are Baganda, they are just they are Banyarwanda, they are Barundi. If you go to Kayunga, Busana, they are all Kuku, people from South Sudan. How did those people come here? They came here because of the limited commercialization that had already taken place because of the coffee and cotton and uh, sugar cane. Within Uganda, we did not have enough jobs. We did not have enough workers. That's why many workers had come from other countries to help us with that small waking up of coffee and cotton and, and sugar cane. If you come to my area in Yabushozi now, when those fellows woke up, those cattle keepers there, when we woke them up, you find a home has got so many uh, babakas, workers. You can find like 20, 30 in one home in, in that Nyabushozi area, Tiruvura area, because of this limited limited thing of, of the milk, the, the dairy industry. So the answer for jobs is wealth creation. You, 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 you do commercial, you, you do wealth creation, commercially, you will create jobs. Then other people will work in the factories. This, this uh, Nama Amve here, Nama Amve, they now have 74, 74 factories which are finished now. They have another 147 which are being constructed. When the whole, all the factories are built, there will be 500 factories in Namambe here, employing 200,000 people. And if you look at the area of, 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 Nama, of Namambe, it's just 2,000 acres. Imagine 2,000 acres creating jobs for 200,000 people. So that is the answer. This is jobs, 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 number one, commercial agriculture will create jobs, especially if you do it with Echivaro, with, with Chura. Two, factories will create jobs. Three, services, hotels, and tourism. Before Corona, a lot of people were working in tourism and transport. You have seen how many people are employed in transport in border border. I see this. So the jobs cannot come unless you sort of you, you, you do wealth creation. Wealth creation in the commercial agriculture, in the factories, in hotels, in uh, ICT is what creates jobs. So please, for the sake of the country, but also for your own sake, address the needs of the people. Don't sit here in parliament, parliamentary committee, I don't know what uh, point of order, point of information. If you do that, I have watched, I've been watching here for the last 60 years. I've been watching. Huh? People thought it was like a joke. I remember those young ministers in the 60s, oh, full of themselves, driving up and down, Mercedes-Benz vehicles, talking, drinking alcohol. Because the other parliaments, oh, ho, 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 ho. everybody was a, a very gay. This one has got horns, this one has got horns. So you just watch what shall happen now. But you seem to be quieter, politer, not rude. Katonda Yaba Zubanangi.
Apoi urbană. So, the, 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 I therefore congratulate you on the way you have conducted these uh, elections today. I congratulate the people who were elected, Chenovere. That's vice chairman, Chenovere. Now you can see how Uganda is very close. This Chenovere man, is he not a Bakorrechida group? Because I, I, I like the language of, of those people. They are the ones who, who gave me a very good word, Abakorra Chida, working, working only for the stomach. Because when you put it in Nyankore, it is polite. Okorrenda Yonka. But when you put it in Rugwere, it is very, very rude, but very good. Okorre Chida, Chida is the stomach. I like it so much. But you can hear his name, Chinovere. Okunova is Rinyoro. What does your name mean, Chinovere? Come and tell us. Because Okunova, Okunova is to hate, is to hate in Rinyoro, to, to hate, 